Have you ever wondered how often someone falls as they age? Once someone reaches the age of 80, there is a 50% chance of falling at least once a year. For someone who is 65, that risk is 30%. 60% of all falls occur at home, 30% occur in the community, and 10% occur in hospitals or nursing homes. Approximately 25% of all falls are the result of hazards such as slippery or wet surfaces, poor lighting, inadequate footwear, and cluttered pathways in the home. Fractures occur in one third of these falls, and hip fracture is the number one fracture that occurs, and hip fracture is number one. In fact, 90% of the 400,000 hip fractures in the U.S. each year occur as a direct result of a fall. After the age of 50, the risk of hip fractures doubles every five years. 20% of hip fracture victims will die within one year of the accident, and only 25% will make a full recovery. Falls can be a major life-changing event that robs our elderly citizens of their independence on a permanent basis. When an elderly man falls, he is more likely than a woman of similar age to die as a result. On the other hand, women are more likely to experience a fracture from a fall. Every woman has a cumulative risk of 20% of eventually having a hip fracture. The risk of falling in the hospital has been the subject of intense research. Turns out that about half of the falls in hospitals occur due to confused mental status. Sedative drugs and sleeping pills clearly add to this risk. Intrinsic risk factors of falling include visual impairment, the use of sedative and psychotropic drugs, vertigo or dizziness, the use of assistive devices, blood pressure fluctuation, and fear of falling, among others. Extrinsic risks include wet floors, cluttered environment, rugs, poor lighting, among others. In one study, the strongest predictive variables for a fall were history of a previous fall, poor vision, fear of falling, and the use of antipsychotic drugs in that order. In one prospective study of patients with cataracts, those who were put in a group that received expedited surgery had a 34% reduced rate of falling compared to those whose surgery occurred one year or more later. Walking barefoot or in socks has a higher risk of falling than wearing thin, flat-soled shoes. Exercise and balance exercises in particular have been shown to reduce the incidence of falling. Tai Chi has been shown to be particularly effective. There are beneficial effects of exercise programs that emphasize generalized strength training, functional enhancement, and balance training, especially when this is on a long-term, ongoing basis. If you or a loved one falls, don't panic. Slide or crawl along the floor to the nearest couch or chair and try to get up. If you're unable to get up, call for help. The use of electronic alert systems and cell phones are helpful, of course. Prevention is the most important aspect and includes keeping the home free of clutter, especially throw rugs, extension cords, and other electrical and telephone cords. Apply non-slip treads to stairs. Use handrails on stairs. Use non-skid strips on bathtub and shower floors. Use bath rugs with non-skid backing and wear low-heeled shoes with non-skid soles and avoid shoes with thick soles or high heels. Most importantly, Get into a regular pattern of balance-enhancing and strengthening exercises and make it a regular part of your life.